It is the golden liquid that never spoils. Produced from kind-hearted flying insects that often get a bad rap from their more aggressive relatives. The majestic honeybee has been around since before the dinosaurs and their flawless product has been perfected in so many different varieties. Let's journey to Wilmington Island in the Savannah Low Country to learn more about these incredible creatures and discover a man who has built his own hive of honeybee gems known as the Savannah Bee Company. It started when this old gentleman, Roy Hightower, put his beehives on our property. We had okay. about 100 acres and he would take me into the beehives and I was terrified and would put on a, you know, rain pants and rain coats and you know literally so I wouldn't get stung at all but I remember one time I pulled a frame out and held it up against the sun and you could see the different color honey shining through to kind of like stained glass and this one tasted like this and this one tasted different. Tell me about the different colors and how that happens. Right yeah a lot of people think it's the bee but it's the species of flower okay. so honeybees come over there drink up that nectar take it back to the hive fan it with their wings dry out the water and it turns into honey. I walked in here within a minute, I learned the three types of bees, the drone, right. the worker, and the queen. All yeah, worker bees are female, and okay. people don't know that. And um, it's a very matriarchal society. You have a queen, you have all of these females, and they basically keep the males around just because out of necessity. Tell me the role of the drone. They are fat and lazy. There's not, and they're the males, there's not very many of them. Their sole <laughs> job is to <laughs> mate with the queen. So they all go hang out for like five hours a day on a limb somewhere. If a virgin queen flies by, they all chase her and the fastest ones can mate with the queen. If they do mate with her, they fall down and die and that's their swan song. That part's not very pretty. <laughs> Ted then took me outside to one of his Wilmington Island hides to get some of this Savannah gold straight from the source. And let me tell you, it doesn't get any better than this. Oh, it's yeah. off. Oh, they got yeah. it run down. Yeah. They don't mind me destroying, if someone did this to my house, I'd be really ticked off. They're okay, they're gonna just clean it all up. That, uh, is, a, that is incredible. It's warm honey, yeah, it's not every day yeah. it's like this really warm honey. And the palm honey is just traditionally thin honey anyway. Yeah, yeah, I love it. But isn't that neat? Yeah, fill up on honey here. Yeah. You see this hive, it's like a mini factory. There's 60,000 bees probably in there. They're coming and going, coming and going. They have to visit two million flowers to make one pound of honey. So on that one frame, when it's all sealed, that's about six pounds of honey. So they okay. visited 12 million flowers to do that. And just when I was starting to feel comfortable and confident around the bees. All right, Ted, what are you doing? <laughs> all right. Oh my gosh. Go. Just be calm, just don't squeeze them between your fingers. Okay, okay, not happening. Not gonna happen. That's, they're fuzzy, they feel fuzzy. And they're tickly. I think it's time to get these bees off of my hand. Good job. Voila. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I wasn't planning on doing that All right, today. That's good oh. though, isn't it? Yeah, that was cool. Didn't even need the veil for that. Now tasting the wide variety of honey and honeybee products at either of the two historic Savannah locations is an experience in itself. Much like a wine bar, honey tasting challenges your palate based on the region, the flower, and the changing seasons. The two place the honey our company was founded on. I'm gonna give it a shot here. Yeah, that pump makes it really easy to just let the honey drop right down to the spoon for you, so you can mm. use the same one. Um, no limit on how much. Okay, I'll have one of those. Okay. <laughs> now, I love to go from the Tupelo to the Sourwood. That one's from northern Georgia, although it's often seen in the Carolinas and the Tennessee as well. Mm. So we've gone from low country to high country here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Over to a wildflower honey. Okay. So that's our southwestern Georgia wildflower. It's from the Stockton, Georgia area around the Oki Pinoki Swamp. Swamp honey. Mm -hmm. This is a first. <laughs> it's just, it's warm and earthy. It has that very natural taste to it that you don't get in the little honey bears you get at the grocery store. Yeah, well that, that's, that's what's so different about all these <laughs> is they, they have such a unique flavor. How about eating honeycomb? Oh yeah. Now, this is the most raw nutritional way to eat honey. Cut a nice gooey chunk, don't be shy. Cut oh. top to bottom and get some of that honeycomb. Just 100 like 100% edible, okay. yeah. People often do what I just did, just make their whole way down the line. And oh, that's what we, mm. we tell everyone to do that. Try them all. <laughs> and of course, the Savannah Bee Company store would not be complete without an employee who works here named 
B. And yes, it really is B. I'm not just messing with you. <laughs> so we have the employee named B, and of course a B skep, which is incredibly popular with both the kids and me. See ya. So today I learned that much like humans, the female honeybee makes all of the decisions and has the final say. But more importantly, I acquired a new appreciation for the art of beekeeping, the amazing honeybee.